Now, the Berkeley Colombo mission to Mercury is the European Space Agency's first experience of sending an exploratory space probe to a very hot part of our solar system, 350 degrees Celsius to be exact. Two spacecraft will be launched in 2013 and are expected to reach the planet no less than six years later. This important mission will be made possible in part by researchers at Tyndall National Institute in Cork. One of the researchers joins us this morning, Brandon O'Neill, along with Sean Duke of the Science Spin magazine. You're very welcome, Good morning. Thank, Thank you very much. This is exciting. It's great to see Ireland being involved in some aspect of the uh, space exploration. I mean, Absolutely, yeah. This is another prestige mission of the European Space Agency. And here in Ireland, we've got uh, a research institute in Cork that's right up there making it all happen. Well, tell us why Mercury. What's the fascination? Well, Mercury, actually, I think there's only been two previous missions, one in the 70s and one a little bit later to Mercury. So even though it's only the second planet over from us, we actually know very little about it. Uh, so there's obviously a big scientific interest in Mercury. Uh, it's got very strange gravity, very strong gravity. Um, you know, so there's a lot that scientists want to know. So I guess it's a scientific uh, mission okay. primarily. And two previous missions, what happened there? Was it Messenger and... Uh, Messenger, yeah, yeah. Brendan, you might know a little bit more. Nine or ten was one in yeah. the 1970s, and both NASA oh, missions. Okay. Uh, Messenger's still up there. It's actually not due to begin orbit until 2011. And will it be able to relay information back? Without... Oh, yeah. Um, all of these will be really <laughs> relaying information it's back. It's a big worry that, that yeah. the communications actually works. So, w w Mercury again, then, when we look at going back in the 70s and the advance in technology from there, from then to now, if you like, um, what difficulties will face the craft that's going up? Well, the biggest issue is that it's so close to the sun. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, so the, as you said before, the, the temperatures are going to be very, very high, around about 350 degrees centigrade. So particularly for the electronics that are on board, these, these modules still have to endure these very high temperatures, and it's very, very difficult. Typically, you know, silicon is used for most of the electronic devices. Silicon has a lot of difficulty up at those very high temperatures, and some of the newer materials that have been used, like gallium nitride, silicon carbide, um, they have better high temperature properties. So we're working on some of the issues that are involved in, in getting these materials to operate at these this very high temperatures. fantastic. Tell us a little bit about the, the research then at Tyndall. Who well, Tyndall is the, the largest of, is the largest um, research institute in Ireland and we, we do research in all of the areas of information and communication technology, photonics, nano and microelectronics. Um, we have a Ethereum modeling group, microsystems. So we, we span all of the areas of, of information and communication technologies. And what sort of information will, will, will the craft be feeding back to, to the base? Well, mostly about the atmosphere. It should give us some information about you know, the origins of, of our own solar system. Um, it has some very, very unusual properties. It's quite small, but has um, very strong um, magnetic field and gravitational field. And, and also, um, they think that the, the, the core of Mercury is there's quite a bit of iron in it, although they're not seeing any iron in the spectroscopic um, examinations that they're doing from Earth. So they need to get up close and get, get the orbiters in close and um, to get better okay. information. And where will it launch from? It's going to launch from French Guiana. Okay. And it, will there be one craft or two? No, there's actually two. It's a collaboration between the Japanese um, Space Agency and the European Space Agency. So each of them have one module. One, one will um, orbit in the magnetosphere and the other will, be, um, will have a, a different orbit around the, pole, around the poles. Excellent stuff. And what's just, what sort of finance is this going to? Um, I think from, from the European Space Agency, it's around about s just over 600 million. Um, so okay. it's, it's, it's one of the more expensive um, projects that the European Space Agency has taken on. I think uh, somewhere around 660 million. And it's easy to come in and criticise that and say, in, you mm. know, in the current climate, blah, blah, blah. But the breakthrough and in 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 even the materials you're developing, they, they could be adapted to other uses, not just necessarily the, the, for this particular space trip. Yes, well, the, the computer side of things, I mean, the computer at the moment overheats if you, if you use it too much. So the problem is the material, you know, the material is it can't cope with the heat that well. So something like this could be transferred into a new material you could use in the computer so the computer could run faster and, uh, you know, much better. Because uh, at the moment you'd hear a fan. If the computer is, is heating up, you'd hear a fan going. So that's because the material isn't working that efficiently. And, uh, so this could, this could spin off into on-Earth applications. Absolutely brilliant. Um, why has it taken so long? Has there been ongoing plans or were things just shelved? And someone decided, look, we've got, we've got to revisit Mercury, we've got to look back at this now. Or has there been ongoing research into going back since the 70s and 80s? Well, I mean, the, 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 the two previous ones were, were by NASA, I suppose. Um, the European scientists want to, want to have their own modules with their own experiments going up there. And as I said, it's a, it's a shared uh, mission between the Japanese Space Agency and the European Space Agency. So on the, the European module, there's something like 11 different experiments uh, on that module, you know, each with a principal investigator looking after the particular experiment. 
So, you know, all of these scientists want to find out different things about what's going on within the atmosphere, about, you know, the gravitational fields, the magnetic fields, all of these issues. So they're, they're all putting on their own experiments on the module. And would it be extremely competitive between NASA and the European Space Agency, or is there a heck of a lot of cooperation and sharing of files and things? There's more cooperation yeah. these days, I think, think so, on a lot yeah. of missions, because yeah. they're so expensive. I mean, even the Americans are struggling to fund their space program. And that's, for example, why you don't see a lot of, of manned missions anymore, because they're so expensive. So, uh, you know, the days of the Russians and the Americans competing. Uh, I think it's a different scene now, would you say, Brandon? Yeah, yeah, it seems to be a lot of collaboration. I, th I think even the rocket that's going yeah. to put them up there is a Soyuz rocket. Yeah, the, r the Russians traditionally had, just, had just these very see. powerful rockets, yeah. you know, so we all need to use those. There. And how will the, the staff at Tyndall, how many staff? Tell us a little bit about the, the research. Um, there's facility. about 500 people working at Tyndall. It's a, it's, it's a very, very large research institute, and about 100 of those are, are PhD students, okay. and all, the, all of the rest would be staff. So there's about 50 um, support staff. All the rest would be engineers, technicians, and mainly research scientists. So counting down the day to launch and looking forward to it, no doubt. Yeah, particularly Big the guys involved in the particular project will be looking forward to getting their, their parts up in space. Fantastic. Well, look, thanks for coming in and sharing that story with us. Interesting, informative. And Sean, as usual, thank you very much for, for finding some great guests. <laughs> okay, thanks,